I don't know. I can't, I can't speak upon it. So I'm not are. to speak upon murder one. Oh, so you are in a gang? You are in a gang? In a gang, yes. You are? I, I wasn't born free. You're a white girl. You're in a gang? I may look white, but I ain't white. What are you? Uh, a whole lot of uh, Irish mob. Oh, Irish? Oh, Irish blood. Irish fair. mob. Freemason. All right, welcome back, everybody. We're in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada, and we're here with Sarah. How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Good. So... I met Sarah as she was walking on Las Vegas Boulevard. How old are you? 34. Do you give us permission to use this video on our YouTube channel? I do. Are you struggling with any kind of addiction? Using, yes. What are you using right now? Marijuana, and from time to time, methamphetamines. Okay. Um, that's, about, that's about it. How long have you been in Vegas? On and off, you know, uh, probably like 30 years, 34 years. <laughs> oh, 34 years? Yeah. Wait, wait, you were born in another state though, right? Mm-hmm. So you came as a baby? Uh, yes, I have family who lives here. Okay, who's the little friend right there you got? Lift them up a little bit. Oh, my, my, my llama, this is my paca. What's, what is it, your paca? Mm -hmm. It's an yeah. alpaca. I noticed your bandana, are you gang affiliated? Yes, but right. um, uh, the bandana isn't worn for gang affiliation. Oh, okay. Do you, can you share what gang you're in? Uh, yes, I can. Um, I am Murder One. Murder One, is that a Vegas gang? No. Okay. No. Where, the kind of, where are they from? Um, I was, uh, I don't want to say recruited, but I was recruited out of Oklahoma City. See, I kind of get things mixed up sometimes, yeah. so I'm not, like, we we chose for me to not speak about Murder One unless my brother is with me to hold me okay, accountable. Okay, let's not talk about it. Thank you How about, much. but I do want to ask, what's the jump-in process for a female to get in a gang? I'm not talking about Murder One, any any gang. Um, I, okay, see, with that kind of stuff, I don't know. Okay. I was I was raised differently, and okay. um, we don't we don't speak about it. Got it, got it. Okay, no problem. All right, Sarah. So, where were you born? In Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Okay, and then uh, you were raised where? Um, in Athens, Texas. Athens, Texas. You went to high school there? Um, I think my freshman year. Okay, and then did you graduate? Um, not from not from Athens. I graduated um, somewhere else in Oklahoma City. Tell us how what Athens was like growing up. Athens, oh, it's a small town. I mean, it's like a really small town. Um, you know, there's not there's not a whole lot to do on Friday night except maybe go to the the bowling alley or the skating rink. You know, oh, yeah. so like it's a little bit different than life here. You know. <laughs> All right. So you graduated high school. What kind of student were you? Um, A's and B's. You yeah. know, I was, I was pretty smart. Who raised you, mom um, and dad? Yeah, my mom and my stepdad, yes, sir. What were they like? Um, my mom was a parole officer, so things were, you know, always really strict. We didn't really go to friends' houses and, like, um, because there were so many girls, you know, uh, it was our responsibility to help, like, take care of the younger sisters. When did you start dabbling in the drugs? Oh, um, I was really young. How old? I think I might have been, like, eight, maybe ten when I smoked marijuana. Your mom didn't find out, huh? Oh no, no. Well, I think we told my mom, by the time I was 13, my mom knew that I, I had smoked it before. So you know? like, well, who, who introduced you to it? Um, I think maybe an uncle of mine. Okay. Um, I, I don't think maybe an uncle, of my, an uncle of mine. I apologize. All right, let's get to where you got, um, you tried hard drugs, when was that? Oh, um, I think, I th okay, I think it was my freshman year of college. No, it wasn't my freshman year of college. I think I was 20 by the time, like, I decided to, like, you know, step out of the marijuana scene and really, like, you know, dabble hard in, yeah. in, in meth. Why do you think you started doing meth? Okay, so I suffer from cancer, and I hate to say that it, like, it helps with the pain, but it does. I have a lot of, like, tightening in the chest and stuff. Um, because I have developed a tumor, so that you know, it just kind of it just kind of helped in the way that marijuana wasn't. When did you were you diagnosed with cancer? When was I diagnosed? Yeah. Oh, I was really young. Really? Yeah. What kind I think is, I was like. What kind is it? What kind? Hodgkin's yeah. lymphoma. Oh, I'm so sorry. Thank you. Um, are you stage? What stage are you in? I'm a stage four, and I'm okay. terminal. So. If you don't mind me asking, can you explain? Oh the no, I don't mind. Okay, oh, explain um, the situation. How you found out, and what, how you've been struggling with it. Um, so behind your ears, you have lymphnodic glands. Um, they produce like bodily secretions, you know, so like the sweat or um, earwax, you know, stuff like that comes from these glands. And um, I was getting really sick all the time, and like I was, like I was exhausted, exhausted. I mean, like ridiculously exhausted for a little kid. You know, my mom was like, well, this isn't right, you know. <laughs> so uh, you know, we went to the doctor and we started asking questions, and you know, it was like. 
test after test after test, you know, and they just couldn't figure out what it was. And um, they weren't thinking along the lines of cancer. And so I went to Oklahoma and my mom said, hey, you know, we've tried to figure out what's going on and they're not giving us any answers. You know, is there a doctor that you can take her to in Oklahoma City? And my grandma said, well, you know, we'll try. We'll try and see what we can find out. And I had an uncle who was going to um, the, I think it's the Nazi Zudi Transplant Institute in Oklahoma City. They offer like um, certain uh, tests uh, to test for cancer. Um, it's a screening actually. Um, it's usually suggested to people over the age of 55, but because of what was going on with me, you know, they thought it wasn't a bad idea to go ahead and try it. And so we tried and sure enough, you know, I came back with cancerous cells. And so they pinpointed it to my lymphatic glands behind my ears and in my neck. You have them underneath your armpits and your groin, you know, and your butt, at the bottoms of your feet, your hands, so, and like my mouth and stuff. I'm so sorry. It's okay, thank you. What's the prognosis? Um, um, I shouldn't have made it to 25 and I'm 34. Oh, okay. Is so, there any hope? Oh, no. Oh. No. There's no, um, there's no like cure. Okay, there is no specific cure for it. You can um, reduce or decrease the, when, okay, when it's in the, malignant stage um, you can like decrease how aggressive it is you can also if it's not and it's benign you know you can help maintain that state of like dormancy it's it's usually uh, combated with things like uh, sulfate and I can't take sulfate I'm allergic to it you know so it's like okay what medicine we do got <laughs> you can't take or you're gonna die you know so I don't know which is I don't know which is quicker, you know? Couldn't, I couldn't take the pills, the opiates, they put me to sleep, I'm, I'm a lightweight. So like hydrocodone, oxycodone, stuff like that, Darvacet, okay. Vicodin. All right, I wanna get a picture of your life. So before 20, you were doing okay, you weren't homeless or anything, you were going to school, you went to college, right? Then you started the hard drugs, did you finish college? No, I didn't finish. Um, I was going to, well, I was, my major was early childhood education and I didn't finish it. No okay, sir. what school are you going to? Uh, Southern Nazarene University. Okay. Now, between the ages of 20 to 34, did you, during that time, did you ever have a, um, a job or an, your own place? Uh, oh, yeah. Relationship? Oh, you did? Okay. So you weren't using some of those years? Um, uh, man, this is hard to explain. My dad, um, he's kind of like devoted himself to like figuring out my cancer, figuring yeah. out the ways to combat it, and then changing it up so that we can maybe get ahead of the disease. It's always easier to fight something if it's in your face, if you're staring at it. If it's chasing you or you're chasing it, you know, it's kind of like a never ending story, you know? So um, he's really tried to like build um, a routine and schedule that, you know, kind of gives versatile um, tactics. Do you have any children? Um, I actually would prefer not to speak All about right, that. We don't speak about children. Have you ever suffered a mental illness? Yes. Can you elaborate on that? Um, I, I've served in the military, so I suffer PTSD, uh, post-traumatic stress syndrome. I also suffer from anxiety, you know, flashbacks, depression, okay. manic episodes. But a lot of that, you know, through, through like medication can be controlled. First of all, thank you for your service. It's been a true honor. Second, uh, what what branch? Uh, the Marine Corps. So you went to the military after college or when you dropped out? Yeah. Um, were you ever in a relationship, married or anything? Um, yes, I've been. Um, okay. Yes, I've been married. Okay. Um, uh, I'm, but you know. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a widow, so if oh. it's okay, I would prefer not oh, to. we don't talk about it. Sorry about that, too. Um, all right, so now let's talk about how you survive here on the streets. Um, do you do you panhandle? Do you boost? Do you do dates? Or all uh, three? <laughs> whatever. You know, right. whatever, uh, whatever, I can, whatever I can get away with, and I hate to say get away with as if I'm not supposed to do it, but, you yeah. know, sometimes, like, you know, if, if you're sent into the store to go buy a Coke and you end up, like, stealing a bag of chips or like you know causing some problems they're like no you know we ain't doing that you know so sometimes like i accidentally mess up and i might cause a tip and i might yeah. you know be told i'm not allowed to like panhandle or talk to anybody or yeah. go on dates whatever it may be have you had any uh, violent altercations um yes yeah well i had okay i had my purse over here and he was on this side of me and most of the time like you know, we, we like, he's right in front of me, you know? And so I'm used to like being able to grab his arm, 
you know, but he had to like stand up and come over, you know? And so when he came over, he knocked me and then grabbed my bag. And so like, I have no clue where it came from, but I just reached up and grabbed his neck, you know, and, and you know. Do you stay healthy out here? Do you eat properly or? Uh, sometimes it gets hard sometimes, um, depending on, on what's available. Um, you know, sometimes we don't, we don't get enough uh, protein and, and nutrients in, in like you're, what we're eating. You're very healthy and strong. Do you work out anywhere or do you walk a lot? Uh, <laughs> I walk a lot, yeah. um, a whole lot. Uh, yeah. That's not a necessity, right? Not because you want to. Um, it's some because I want to. It's yeah. very therapeutic for me. Okay. Um, you know, but that comes with trying to cope. Do you have uh, an email you could share with us? Oh, I don't. I don't really mess with um, social media. There's no way people can get a hold of you. Uh, okay. Hey, if you know, if you know how the grapevine works, hey, you know. Well, you know what? Uh, you have access to YouTube. Um, well, sometimes you can yeah. get it. Well, when your video goes up, I'll let you. Well, when I see, I'll let you know, and then you can read the comments. Hey, every prayer I can get. What was your dream as a little girl? I would have become a teacher. Oh yeah. Yes. Why was that? Why? I don't know. I just always liked teaching. You know, I think like the most influential people in my life were teachers and I really wanted to be somebody who made a difference. I really wanted to, you know, be be that adult in in a kid's life that made them Who was that adult in your life? Who was that te who's the, who was your favorite teacher? You do not ask a kid what their favorite teacher is. Do you know how many teachers I've had? That's okay. not fair. Give me a couple of teachers. Oh, law. Okay, so Mrs. Tate, my uh -huh. choir teacher. Okay, shout out. A, and uh, Ms. Tate. Mrs. Bass. All right, my shout debate, out to Mrs. Bass. Yeah. A, my debate coach, yes, sir. Oh, awesome. Oh, and Mrs. Ford. Yeah. Yeah, second grade. Do you play any instruments? <laughs> oh, um, yeah, I play a lot of instruments. What, what do you play? Um, I can play the cello, uh, the baritone, the clarinet, the violin, the piano. You can play all those. The guitar, the bass. Can you sing? Um, yes. Let's, let's hear a little no. something. No. <laughs> I cannot. I'm a little too shy. Were you abused as a child at all? It doesn't have to be sexually, physically, mentally. I kind of I kind of dealt with it on my own okay. for a long time, uh, yeah. but I suffered, you know, sexual abuse. I'm so sorry. It's okay. I just, I kept my mouth shut about it instead yeah. of turning to my parents like I should have. Yeah. And, you know, that's not, it's not really fair yeah. to my parents, you know, because they were good parents and they cared about me. And it wasn't could... your parents that did it though, right? No. no was no, someone no. else in the family? Um, yeah, some, somewhere along the line, somewhere. So we don't have, have to disclose who it was, but yeah. Thank you. So it was an adult. Well, had it happened for a long time or? Um, yeah, I chose, well, I chose to try and handle it myself, yeah. you know, thinking, I knew how to handle it, and it, you know, it definitely taught me a lot. But it—it yeah. it was a long. It, I suffered more because of it. You know, I hope that yeah. anybody that's you know dealing with a situation like that doesn't stay silent. You know, I yeah. hope that they do at some point become courageous enough to seek help. If there's anybody that you can reach out to, if there is anybody that you can trust, don't hesitate and don't wait. You know, it's not gonna get, it's not gonna fix itself and it's not gonna get any better until you decide to make it better, you know? What's your so. message to young people uh, wanting to uh, dabble into drugs? Uh, this is the way it was put to me. Um, unless you got a need, don't bother asking. But don't make it, a, don't, don't, don't allow it to become a crutch. Don't allow it to become an enabler. Can you explain a need? What do you mean by that? Unless you have a need. Mm, the way we kind of regulated um, my drug use because of my cancer and not being able to take, you know, the, the pain meds, you know, it was kind of like, well, how, how is your pain? Rate your pain, you know? And my mom would always tell me, what did the doctor say? What, like, rate your pain, you know? Can you handle this on your own? Do you need to take medicine? Um, or do we need to go to the hospital? And uh, it would always go from like, you're fine and you can handle it to we need to go to the hospital. You know, she always skipped over that middle part and I would always be like, oh, you're cheating me, you know? But um, hey, she kept me she kept me honest with myself, you know? Okay. And I, I wanna be really careful because it takes, it takes a person, it takes somebody with a very strong willpower to be able to, you know, allow marijuana or any other type of a uh, contraband to be used as a form of pain medication. You know, look at how many people we have addicted to pain meds, yeah. you know, and they are very addictive, you know. It's like, I'm pretty sure anything else that you can substitute with it is gonna be just as. So it's not it's not something to joke around with. It's Final message about drug use. Yes, don't, unless you have to. <laughs> well, except for marijuana, you know, because yeah. that's God's gift. 
All right, your most cherished memory in life. Oh, man. I got a lot of them. I got a lot of special days, you know? Man, I don't know, I can't answer that. Who's your first celebrity crush? I have no clue. You got me, bud. Um, I think maybe, I think, no, oh no. Ricky Martin? Oh no, 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 <laughs> dang, it was Bruce Willis. I promise you, it was Bruce That's Willis. That's the second person who said that. <laughs> really, heck yeah. 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 Hey, he was a sexy man back yeah. in the day. <laughs> yeah. Favorite food? Uh, pizza. Are you a pessimist or an optimist? Oh, uh, I'm a pessimist who tries to be an optimistic person, oh, like okay. looking yeah. at good outlook. Uh, that's a good way to put it. You ever met a celebrity out uh, here? Yes, sir. Who'd you meet? Um, who did I meet? I've met I've met a lot of people out here. Uh, Rihanna. Um, you met Rihanna where? Mm -hmm. um, I think at a hotel. Okay. Uh, down on the strip, you uh, know. Sorry, I'm a little cold. Any male um, celebrities? Oh, Matthew McConaughey. Where'd you see him at? Uh, in an elevator. Okay. Like he was just like right there. I was like, oh. That's cool. No dating any celebrities? I don't think that they would want me to say their names. Yes, I've dated. Um, oh, yeah. I think I was driving home to my mom's when I ran yeah. into him. Okay. He might have been like broken down on the side of the road with his son down in Texas. Oh, you're going to talk about it. Okay. That's cool. Favorite flavor of ice cream? Oh, I, oh, actually, I don't know. I don't know. I like all ice cream. Yeah. If you could have lunch with anyone famous, past or present, who would it be and why? Man, okay, so I have to go with Jennifer Aniston because she says she's my mom because supposedly we look so much alike, you yeah. know, so a... Hey. Oh, I see it. Yeah, Jennifer Aniston? Yeah, I okay. don't. <laughs> she was way too beautiful. No, you're beautiful too. Favorite color? Black. Why? Oh, Irish mob. But you're an animal lover. Oh, yeah, I love animals. What's your favorite animal? Oh, a dog, I think. All right, well, thank you so much for this interview, Sarah. Remember that song, Sarah? Sarah Smile. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any questions for me before I let you go? Um, why didn't you just correct me? Huh? Why did you let me say Sarah Smile? Isn't it Oh Shirley or something? Oh Sherry. That's oh, oh, oh Sherry. Sherry. Oh Sherry, yeah. Oh, my bad. Oh, but Sherry. But there was a song called Sarah. I forgot by who. Uh-huh. All right, thank you so much. Yes, sir. You have a great night and be safe out there. Yeah, you too.